Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and of course BeamNG Drive. So vehicles like the Jeep Wrangler, the Mercedes-Benz G-Class and the Suzuki Jimny are all very good off-roaders. They're all very good at what they're meant to do. Alright, so what we're doing today is building ourselves the best off-roader possible, but it's also going to be built to a certain standard. It's going to be a luxury off-roader, but it's going to be the best luxury off-roader ever. Let's go ahead and start building the car. It's going to be, what, partial aluminum for panel material, a ladder chassis there. It's going to be, what, AHS steel, of course, a longitudinally mounted engine, which is like what every single off-roader has, basically. Uh, double wishbones up front because that seems kind of fine and we can go for solid axle leafs in the rear so it's just good old-fashioned dependable solid axle leafs in the rear uh it's not going to be the most comfortable for on-road driving but i think it'll do the job let's go and start a new engine now it's going to be a what a 90 degree v8 engine with what aluminum four valve per cylinder let's make it what if a four liter i think the mercedes is a four liter v8 I'm not exactly sure which brand is going to make this vehicle, but I think we can actually make an entirely new brand just for this vehicle. This is going to be like an off-road oriented brand, which I, I don't think I have. I don't think I have like an SUV brand that just makes SUVs. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be what, like a, a more realistic, smaller V8 engine. because it's, it's 2016 now and things are starting to get a little, little crazy for fuel efficiency. We need to have some good fuel efficiency still. I want to get like what, like 15 MPG out of this thing, which is not a lot, but it's a luxury vehicle. So what, a 3.9 liter twin turbocharged V8 engine, that sounds fine. Let's go for what, a heavy duty forged internal setup. It's going to be a uh, pretty low cam profile. Let's go for VVTL cams, let's give it a VVL. Because that'll help us out probably a little bit. Now, do we want like a, tw like a single turbo? A single turbo V8, no, let's go for a twin turbo V8. Like the best of the best here, so a twin turbo V8 with all the bells and whistles, direct injection. Let's go for, what, 95 octane premium, and let's go for, like, a fancy muffler setup, just because it's it's 2016, and we're starting to get pretty serious on fuel emissions and all that all that jazz, basically. Let's give lots of fuel. It's making less torque than the G-Class and less horsepower, but it's still a pretty respectable amount of both. Let's give it more ignition timing, actually. There's 500 and 560, so 510 horse and 570 or so five yeah 510 horse 575 torque so i think a little less horsepower but more torque than the g63 which is pretty much good to go four by four nine speed automatic with like what i mean we can we can gear for a high top speed it's not going to go that fast though let's gear to like one let's just limit it to 180 it's going to have a blocking differential let's give it chunky off-road tires and this is going to be like the off-road of off-road trims basically so it's going to be big chunky off-road tires Let's give it, what, big old vented disc, six pistons, and we'll give it four pistons in the rear. Let's give it, like, what, 15s in the rear, 16s in the front, I mean, sorry. We'll give it an off-road skid tray. We will give it the cooling clouds. We don't need that. It's going to be, what, I think a five-seater. It's going to be a luxury five-seater. It's going to be obvious. It's a big vehicle. Uh, let's give it a luxury interior and a premium infotainment. Electric power steering. Like, hydraulic might be better for an off-roader, but this is still a fancy car. We'll give it launch control. We'll give it the best safety. We'll give it, what, air suspension. Let's do an off-road tune just by default for now. So it gets 10 MPG average, which is actually right in line with everything else. It's quite safe. It's pretty comfortable. It's okay for off-roading, and it's very, very tall. I don't want... I, I want it to be a little little bit better than that, actually. If we just go ahead and um, give it some, like, meaty off-road tires. Let's give it, like, 33 and a half inch. That's fine. That's fine. So $137,000. It's not as expensive, actually, as a G-Wagon. It's actually cheaper than a G-Wagon. Um, but I think, like, a decent bit. This is, like, in between a G550 and a G63 competitor. Uh, but it costs, I think, a good bit less than the G63, at least. Definitely, like, a lot less than that. But it gets 9 MPG average, which is so, so terrible. I think the G-Wagon gets 10, so it's got to speed there. Uh, it's very not sporty, which is okay. But it's a good off-roader. It's good. Okay, service costs, actually. It's quite low emissions. Um, but overall, it's actually not not that bad. I think it'll be a, a pretty good off-roader once we're done designing it. So what I'll do now is design the car in a time-lapse, then we'll hop into BeamNG Drive and see how it drives. So sit back, relax, guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. 
Alright guys, so we're starting the build for my off-road SUV, body on frame, basically a truck but on steroids. Uh, the front has a sort of V-shape set up here and I'm now building the, the front skid plate and bash bar. I'm uh, pretty much making my custom own front bumper because the stock one didn't really have much potential and I couldn't really do too much with it. So I'm sort of playing around with all these uh, mod fixtures and whatnot in the front end to give it some sort of very aggressive front stance. I added in these um, nice circle headlights for now, which I do play around with for a bit and I do change them later on. I look for these uh, sort of half-cut circles that I'll find later on. I add some door handles and I add these half cut circles or almost uh, almost fully full circles uh, then I started trimming out the front main grill to make sure it's an actual proper grill uh, add a second layer to the headlights and sort of make them a little bigger get a little proper better shape uh, basically filling in the headlight surrounds area and adding some detail to the front grill I have some sort of vertical slats which I do change because they look a little bit weird and it's a little bit just too much of these these blocky chunks like in the front bumper add some more detail to the front sides and I do these sort of horizontal instead of vertical slats instead of the very very big very chunky still adding these three orange daytime running lights and changing the car's main daytime running lights to orange as well uh, now playing with things like uh, design details on the bumper and stuff I add these sort of hooks for uh, attaching things to tow or attaching other things and whatnot the car adding a, a hood bulge adding again these these pieces on the hood so you can uh, attach wire to them to keep the brush away uh, when you're hardcore off-roading adding some much wider fender flares on the inside i've already added them on the outside so i added them on the inside so it fills them out just a little better uh, adding this detail to the bottom of the front sort of door sill area uh, changing the door handles and adding a little more detail to the front and making it all complete there the mirrors are already on the car I am playing around with the idea of adding some massive fender flares on the rear But I decided against it because it was just a, a bit too much work to get it to look pretty good and This body is good enough as is uh, Starting with the tail lights. These are gonna be completely custom uh, Using bumper fixtures actually so he changed the bumpers and the lights and make them multi-leveled and layered So it's got this red glass within this red glass and part of the lights up etc So it looks super gosh darn cool uh, uh, Now working in the rear bumper I start using the stock default rear bumper, and it looks okay, but uh, I ultimately decide against it and, and change it. So I add some fixtures to the back, like a spare tire, a door handle. Uh, I go to the side now to change the giant window. I make one giant window instead of three individual windows. It's one giant appearing window. Uh, I think it just got some elegance and classy kind of look to it. I'm adding a bit more detail to the front and back on the rear of the car. I add these dual exhausts. I don't like them still, but I'm still toying with the idea at this point. Adding a bit more detail to the back, some, some sort of black painted area on the, the back tailgate. And now I'm sort of playing with the idea of a completely new rear bumper, which is what I eventually do here and add massive dual exhaust instead, making the fender flares just a little wider and a little bit better fitting, to be honest, because they look a little better and they have to blend with the bumper and the rear bumper a little better, adding a bit more details on that, adding a single rear wiper because I, I think that'd be kind of cool, and that's what I add. Uh, I play with the idea of adding something on the roof, which I decide against it, adding some more details to the back. Now changing the color, I, I settle on this orange, I was contemplating white, but white just doesn't look very good, uh, making some more details for the front fender flares, and going to the side and adding a very simple badge. This is the Pioneer Rocket 8, and it's getting some sort of rocket style badge, and I try to make an American flag in the front, and I just like place down the red, white, and blue, and I, I just give up. So in front of us is the 2020 Westward Pioneer Rocket 8. So like I said, this is the 2020 Westward Pioneer Rocket 8. And I, I was going to put an American flag in the front, and I just gave up at red, white, and blue, and like, I, I don't know how to make an American flag, like, using custom fixtures. So it's it's apparently a Dutch company. This is now a, a Dutch company, at least for now. I'm not sure where the word Pioneer would come up in, in you know, the Netherlands, or Rocket 8 doesn't sound very... You know, it doesn't, it sounds very American, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, this is a currently Dutch crossover SUV company. They make high-end, you know, crossovers or sport utility vehicles. It's similar to Land Rover, basically. This is like the Land Rover of the, the Netherlands. I don't know why that's a thing, but it's going to be a thing. All right. So it's a bright orange color. Let's go over the design of the car real quick. So it's got this aggressive front and it's similar to like a Ford Bronco. It's got these traditional circle headlights with a big wide grille. We got a massive skid plate underneath, a big, huge seal front bumper. It's, a pretty, it's actually a pretty small grille. There's not really a lot of grille space 
space. We got the the triple sort of daytime running lights just to let you know that this is a wide car because it's probably too wide by most standards. Massive, massive tires. It's got, I think, 18 inch wheels, uh, 19 inch wheels, which is actually quite large and 34.4 inch uh, tires, which is huge. This is Ford Raptor style tires. This is like the big top dog of the Pioneer vehicle. The Pioneer is, I guess, our uh, full sized a sport utility vehicle. This is like a body on frame truck sport utility vehicle and the the Pioneer Rocket 8 is the high performance version of that car or truck I guess in this matter. Um, so back end, it's got these similar taillights actually to a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. I took like the basic shape from a G-Wagon. I flipped them sideways and I stuck them up on the side of the vehicle. So actually I'm, I'm really proud of how the back lights turned out. Um, if you actually look here, so we got the taillights which is just that which is kind of cool. We've got the brake lights. So if you have your taillights on and brake lights, that's your brake lights. We got our charge signals. We got our. We don't actually have reverse lights, but that's that's yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We don't need that. But yeah, it's it's overall not bad actually at all. The headlights. We've got our headlights, which are the projectors in the middle. We've got our um our running lights, which are these orange rings around the headlights, which is pretty gosh darn cool, I think. Uh, so when you're driving down the street, you see this orange glow. We've got massive, massive fender flares here that are, are, are a mod fixture. We've got these uh, power folding um, steps on the side, I guess is what they're called, but they're power folding. This is this is still like a luxury high end vehicle, but it's more of like a rugged styled vehicle. This is like an off-roader that's, that's actually an off-roader first, but it's also a luxury vehicle. This is like a, a G-Wagon competitor, guys, etc. Um, we got a gas cap back there. We got the rocket sort of badging on the side with some weird text. There's not a lot of fonts right now uh, in the open alpha of automation, so that's what we got. I think this thing would be pretty cool to have like a, a lower end trim, maybe like a V6 or maybe a straight six version of this vehicle um, with around 400 horsepower, 300 horsepower, maybe a diesel. But this thing does have like diesel like power because it peaks in at 18, it makes, it starts making boost at 1800 RPM really. And it peaks at what, 3000, which is still quite low, but it, yeah, it's pretty flat from 1800 all the way till what, to 4000. So it's quite flat all the way across for most of the power band. So what we're going to do is hop in a Beam and G drive and take this thing off-roading. I want to see how this thing handles an off-road course. So I'll see you guys in Beam and G drive in just a sec. Alright, so I was looking for like the most difficult off-road course and I couldn't find really ones that were quite good So I stuck with a default stock beam and G course. This is the East Coast USA. I think this is the off-road trail one I've done this course a few times and it's a good course. It's a really good course The only problem is it's so gosh darn narrow and this pioneer uh, Westward pioneer vehicle is so 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 insanely wide. Oh, that's <laughs> I probably should re-export it, but honestly, I, I think we're just gonna send it. Um, but yeah, this car is so gosh darn wide, it, it's terrible on this course. But we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, so let's start this. I also want to do like a 0-60 to 60 test after, because this thing is actually quite quick. Let me just launch it here. Going uphill, it was pretty quick there. Um, now this course, we could probably stay in a high range the entire time. Um, I have an automatic locker, not a manual locker, so I can't individually lock the front and rear wheels because I just want, just, I just kept the automatic as whatever, an automatic, yeah sure, it's fine. I probably could have went with the manual locking differential, um, but it, it, it's good enough to be honest. Uh, we're going to keep going through here. It's not bad though. Look at this, right here it's quite good. The suspension is a bit stiff. I made it a little bit stiff because this thing was so, so, so wallowy on the roads and stuff. I had to just constantly stiffen it. Uh, but off-roading, it's not, you know, like, if you're going fast, it's a little sketchy. I mean, you know, we, we're crashing into the all the bumps and stuff, but if it's, if it's like, you know, on not crazy off-road, if it's like a more of a, it's more of a Baja off-roader, I feel like. This is more of like a Raptor competitor. Um, I don't know how it performs, because it is, it's, it, it's soft, but stiff at the same time. And I think I do better at high speeds, like sand dunes and stuff. And again, this thing is so, so wild. Look at this. Like, I can't even see, like, where my front really is. I'm not necessarily shooting for the record on this course because th th this course is not for this car. This is like, yeah, th this course would, would be much better off with something like a Suzuki Jimny or something like that. Um, or like maybe like, like like a Ford Bronco maybe is a little smaller, like a base Bronco or maybe like a non-wide body version of this vehicle. Or maybe like a two-door version would be better. But this thing as a four-door version, it is too absolutely nuts. We're going to keep going through here. I can't really see what's in front of me. I'm going to assume everything's fine. It's actually not doing bad though. We are bottoming out a little bit. Thank God we have that skid plate. Yeah. Thankfully, we got that skid plate in front. We're good. 
That's fine. Uh, so maybe after this, I'll do like a quick, um, like a drag race. Because I love having a drag race, um, with, with especially like crazy cars like this. Oh, we're going to keep going. There's a tree. We're, we're good. I think it pulls to the right a little bit now. Yeah, definitely. It's got some issues. Oh, we're fine. This is not good. There's some rocks here. Yeah, the suspension's probably a little too stiff. I think we actually could have made the wheels a little bit smaller. I think they're 19s. I think we would have went down to 17s just for um, more of, like, a, a better ride. And honestly, I, I think they are the standard PSI, which is, like, what, like, quite high. Um, we probably should have lowered the PSI down, and it would have made it a much more competent off-roader as well. But leaving the car perfectly stocked, this is, like, a perfectly streetable machine. I mean, it's obviously a high-performance machine. Oh, it's quick. Oh, it's quick. I can't see. I can't see. It's so big and so square. I literally just can't see anything in front of me. And it, it's terrifying. Oh, we're turning here. Okay. Oh, yeah. This this, this is where it gets really fun. This is where it's going to get really fun. Look at this. It's a little tight. Actually, it's not that bad. I love, love we could just, like, just pr pretty much idle the vehicle. And it still does so, so insanely well. Because it, all that torque is made nice and low. We've been staying third or fourth here just because we don't need to go in first because we all the torque's still there. We don't need to rev this engine up really at all. It makes peak torque to about 4,000 RPM though, so actually it makes peak torque like 3,000 really, like the actual peak. And like not a bad time at 331, not trying for the record. Okay, it's faster than my previous best, which was the Phaeton XTL, which I, I drove that literally in Jan literally a year ago. Over a year ago. Uh, see, these times are really, really weird because I've definitely been on this track more than that. Um, we can't actually see what this car is because we, we don't have it in BMG right now. But yeah, a 331, which is a fine time. I think like if we actually tried, we could probably easily get like a sub three minute time, if not better. Um, but this is a fine time as it is. We're going to hop into a drag strip real quick because I want to see how fast the Rocket 8 is in a quarter mile in a straight line. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little scary, and the suspension's quite soft, so it's gonna, it's gonna really be weird. Alright, West Coast USA, this is the drag strip. This is totally not what this vehicle is meant to be for. I mean, it's sort of meant to be for this. It's supposed to be a car that can go in a straight line, but it's also supposed to be, uh, just a crazy all-out off-roader. Yeah, it's still looking glitched out. I, I, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I'm gonna re-export the car, uh, and I'll give you guys the, um, the BMG mod file if you guys want to mess with this vehicle, and it'll be perfectly fine after this. I'm just gonna test it like this. Let's turn off that. It definitely lurched a little bit there. I'm going to try one more time after. 4.3 to 100, which is nuts. And we actually misshifted there. I'm going to try launching it with um, in low range. And a 12.6. Now, that's got to be fast. Like, and that's got to be a fast thing. Like, how fast is a is a Jeep Grand Cherokee track hawk? 11.7. Okay, so it's, it's a bit faster than that. Well, I think we're definitely faster than a G63 quitting the quarter mile. So lastly, we're at the jump rainy here with the Pioneer Rocket 8. Uh, I think it's going to do pretty good. One thing I want to point out, though, is I actually made these custom windows in these custom sort of window, um, like, like the uh, the door jams, I guess is what this is. I just thought that was kind of cool. Um, so instead of having, like, like the big chunky pillars I had before, it looks like a sort of like a Zuki Jimny. I just made up my own and had, like, a giant glass piece stretching across, or it looks like that at least. Uh, so jump rainy here. I'm going to shoot for, what, 300? Now, this thing is not going to do good in the air, probably, I'm guessing. And its top speed leaves a bit to be desired because it's an absolute brick. It's limited electronically to 180, I think. Oh, no. Maybe it's 240. 200? I guess 300, right? Uh, like 310, that was actually really good. And the car is absolutely trashed. Can we grab it? Can we grab it? Bring it back. Bring it back. It's fine. Just stop. That was actually a lot of fun. Uh, this car was a ton of fun to build. And, okay, I, I always do my best to have, like, the most fun building a car. And I'm so, so, so happy with how this car turned out. I'll leave a download link down below if you guys want to download the Pioneer Rocket 8. Um, I think this brand's probably American, but it's got a Dutch flag there just for now. Um, because I, I wanted the flag and I just didn't have anything re really available. Uh, if you guys like the video, leave a like down below. Make sure to join my Discord link in the description as well. And before I hop off, I want to give a huge shout out to my channel members. And these are people who have went above and beyond to support the channel and support what I do. So huge shout out to my quad turbos. This is uh, DD Man, 
Undertaker and Childish Sin or Sin Lamp is what he's called. Uh, and thanks to my Twin Turbo members and everyone else as well. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time. Still drives perfectly fine. Perfectly fine.